Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna to show you my favorite top 20 meeting tips and tricks in Microsoft Teams. If you wanna jump around this video, feel free to use the timestamps down below in the description. All right, let's jump on the PC and let's check these out. Tip number one, when you're setting up a meeting, you can invite an entire team instead of typing in each individual. So it saves you a little bit of time. Here, I'm setting up a cookie eating contest and I'd like to invite the entire marketing team. Now, once again, I could go through and I could type each individual, but that takes a lot of time. Instead, I can simply type in the team name, select it, and the invitation will go out to everyone who's part of this team. To verify who part of a team back within the main team's view, you can go to a team and then click on the ellipsis. Within this list, there's an option to manage the team. When you click on this, you can see all of the owners and you can see all of the members and guests. So once again, when I send this meeting invitation out, everyone listed here will get a copy of that invitation. Tip number two, Microsoft Teams now has an improved join screen. Let's go ahead and join this cookie eating contest meeting. This drops me on the new join screen. The nice thing with this is I can check what my camera looks like and I can also check to make sure that my audio is configured properly. Here on the left hand side, I currently see that my camera is off. Here I'm gonna toggle it on and now I can see myself. So maybe before I join the meeting, I wanna fix up my hair a little bit or maybe I just had lunch and I noticed something in my teeth. This gives me the opportunity to fix that. Also right now I just have a normal background behind me. I can click on background filters and and here I can choose a blurry background, or maybe I wanna choose from one of many of these different images. Along with setting one of these preset images, I can also add my own custom image. As a little tip, you could go into PowerPoint, create your own image, save it as a PNG or a JPEG, and then you can load that in Microsoft Teams. Over on the right-hand side, I can also check all of my audio settings. Now, one of the worst things is maybe you're joining a larger meeting and you come in with your microphone unmuted and maybe you start talking and you disrupt everyone. Here, you can turn your microphone off and then you can join the meeting. So this is a nice, helpful screen to make sure both your video and your audio are all set to go before you join the meeting. I'm now in the cookie eating contest meeting and it looks like no one else has joined yet. So it seems like a perfect opportunity to share tip number three, and that's meeting options. To access meeting options, let's go to the top bar and click on the ellipsis. And then next, there's a new item here called meeting options. Let's click on that. Previously, you could only access meeting options outside of the meeting and it's now been integrated within. Let's touch on a few of these settings here to see what they do. The first one says who can bypass the lobby. What is the lobby? Well, in a sense, it's kind of a holding pen before people are let into the meeting. So let's say that you're a teacher and you don't want any of your students joining before you join, you can set it to only me. If however, you simply want people to be able to join and then automatically end up within the meeting, you can set it to everyone. Down below, there's another option for who can present. And by being a presenter, you're able to start sharing your screen. But being a presenter does a lot more than just that. When you're a presenter, you can mute others, you can remove participants, you can let people in from the lobby, and you can also start and stop the recording. So it really does a lot more than presenting. If you're a teacher, you probably wanna set it to only me to begin with. If you work in say a corporate environment, hopefully you can set it to everyone and you don't have to worry about other colleagues kicking other people out of the meeting. Down below, there's also the option to allow attendees to unmute. Maybe you're a teacher and you have a kid acting up and you mute that kid. You don't want them to then unmute and continue their reign of terror. Tip number four, although we just set all of our different meeting options, you can still change an individual's permissions within the meeting. Here, for instance, I see that Nestor is an attendee and maybe Nestor wants to present something on his screen, so I now wanna make him a presenter. I don't have to go back to meeting options and reconfigure everything. Instead, I can change his permissions directly from here. When I hover over Nestor, I see an ellipsis. When I click on that, I have a few different options, but one of them is to make him a presenter. When I click on this, it asks me to confirm that I wanna make him a presenter. It also tells me what that actually means. When I click on change, I now see him as one of the presenters. If I wanna change him back to an attendee, once again, I click on the ellipsis and I could switch him back to an attendee. 
attendee. I hope you've been enjoying all these tips so far, but I, I have to apologize. A lot of my team members haven't joined the meeting yet, and I'm gonna need them to show more of this functionality. And that brings me to tip number five. Let's say that you want someone to join your meeting and you very quickly wanna get them a join link. How do you do that? Well, over here on the top bar, you can open up the participants pane. Over on the right hand side, you can simply type in someone's name in your organization and that'll send out an invitation to join your meeting. Also over on the right hand side, I can copy a join link. Let's click on this. Once I copy the join link, I can open up an email message and I can ask people where they are and when they're planning on joining. Here I could paste in the join link and once they receive this, they can click on that link and that'll take them into the meeting. Tip number six, if you wanna be even more aggressive with getting people to join your meeting, you can also request directly from the participants pane that someone joined the meeting. I really want Adele to join, so when I hover over her name here, there's a button that says request to join. Let's click on that. I've now requested Adele to join the meeting and here we can see on Adele's screen she gets a massive prompt here in the bottom right hand corner asking her to join the meeting. It's kind of hard to ignore now. Well she could click on decline but Adele's gonna go ahead and join the meeting by clicking on accept. It looks like Adele is now in the meeting. Hello Adele, I'm really glad that you were so eager to join our meeting today. Tip number seven, if you really need to get someone's attention in a meeting and they're just not responding to you, you can have teams nag that person on your behalf for up to 10 different times. How do we do this? Well, up on the top bar, let's click on the show conversation icon. This opens up the meeting chat and at the very bottom, there's an exclamation mark. Let's click on this. Within this menu, you'll see three different options. You can send a standard chat message. You can also mark it as important. And now there's an option to mark it as urgent. What does an urgent message mean? Well, recipients will be notified every two minutes for 20 minutes. That sounds annoying, but also sounds like it'll be really effective. Let's click on this and I want my team to tell me what the status is of the TPS report. And I'm going to mark that urgent. Let's send this through. Here now within Adele's view under activity, we can see a notification with my urgent question. Now, as soon as Adele sees this, she'll stop being notified about it. However, if she doesn't see it, she'll get a notification every two minutes for up to 20 minutes until she reads this message. I'm starting to wonder why Adele doesn't like joining my meetings. Tip number eight, you can set the spotlight on one of your speakers in Microsoft Teams. So this way the video will always focus on them and it won't shift even if someone Someone else say asks a question. To set the spotlight, simply hover over someone in your meeting, click on the ellipsis, and then you can set the spotlight. Here I'm going to set myself as the spotlight. Here I see a message indicating that I'm currently the spotlight. Once I'm all done and I no longer want the spotlight, I can click on exit spotlight up above. Tip number nine, and this is one of my favorite ones. You can toggle your microphone on or off by pressing the shortcut key control, shift, and end. M, M as in mute. When you press that, you can toggle your microphone off and here I'll toggle it back on by simply pressing that shortcut key. Tip number 10, if you wanna play a video in Microsoft Teams while you're sharing your screen, you also wanna make sure that you include system sound. Here I'll click on the share content icon. Over on the left hand side of the share tray, there's a toggle to include computer sound. Let's turn that on. I'm now sharing my screen and we can see what it looks like from Nestor's perspective. So not only is he able to watch the video, but he's also able to listen to the audio. Tip number 11, I can also record a meeting. Let's say someone's unable to make it, I can share a recording with them. To record a meeting, go up to the top bar, click on the ellipsis, and then there's the option to start the recording. Let's click on that. Once I kick off the recording, I'll see a banner across the top, letting everyone know that a recording is currently in progress. Once I'm all done recording, I can go back up to the ellipsis and then I can go down to stop the recording. To access the meeting recording, I can click on the conversation for this meeting and right here I'll see the recording. I can click on this and this will open up the recording.
To access the recording after the meeting, I can click on chat over on the left hand side and I can go back to the chat for the meeting. Here's my cookie eating contest and I see the recording right here. I could also click back on my calendar, click into the meeting and here too, I can also access the chat to get back to my meeting recording. Tip number 12, if I record a meeting, I can also access a transcript of that meeting. Here once again in the meeting chat, let's click on the ellipsis and let's click on open in Microsoft stream. Once you open up a recording in Microsoft stream, you'll see the recording over here on the left hand side and over to the right, you'll see a transcript of the entire meeting. Tip number 13, you can now use breakout rooms while you're in a meeting. What is a breakout room? Well, here we're all meeting in the main session. Maybe we want to break out into smaller groups and once we're done, maybe say brainstorming, we want to rejoin the main session. Up on top, there's a new icon for breakout rooms. When we click on this, you can indicate how many rooms you want. Here, I'll set up two different rooms. I can then have all of my attendees be automatically assigned into one of these rooms, or I can manually assign them. I'll go with automatic and then click on create rooms. This opens up a pane on the right hand side where I can manually assign participants if someone comes late. Here I see my two rooms and I see that each room has an individual. Once I'm all ready to go, I can click on start rooms. The breakout rooms are now both open and I could join either one of these rooms. Once we're all done with our brainstorming, I can once again click on close rooms and everyone will rejoin the main session. Welcome back to the main session, Adele and Nestor. I hope you had a productive brainstorming session all on your own in your rooms. Tip number 14, you can insert polls into meetings using Microsoft Forms. Within the meeting details, click on the plus icon and then click on Microsoft Forms. On the next screen, click on add. On the next screen, click on save. At the top, you'll now see a new tab for polls and you'll now have the ability to create polls from within your meeting. You can also create polls ahead of time. Within the meeting, I now have a new icon for polls and when I click on that, it opens up a pane where I can now create a poll and I can ask a live question to my audience in this meeting. Tip number 15, if you wanna have a whiteboarding session, Microsoft Teams supports that. Over on the top right hand corner, let's click on the share content icon. This opens up the share tray and we see all the different items that we could share. Over on the right hand side, you can use Microsoft Whiteboard or you could use Freehand by Envision. If we click on Microsoft Whiteboard, we don't have to install anything. It simply launches a whiteboarding app directly in Microsoft Teams and you can collaborate with others. Here I have access to all of these different pen tools. I could insert some text. I could insert post-it notes. If I want an even richer experience, I could also open up within the Microsoft Whiteboard app. However, that requires an installation. If you want to watch a full video on Microsoft Whiteboard, click into the description where I've included a link. Tip number 16, you can turn off incoming video. Why would you want to do that? Well, video uses up a lot of bandwidth. Let's say that someone's sharing their screen and they have their video turned on and it's really just stuttering for you. You might want to turn off the incoming video to see if that improves performance. To turn off incoming video, go up to the ellipsis on the top bar and at the very bottom of the list, there's the option to turn off incoming video. When you check that, you should see an improvement in the performance. Tip number 17, Teams makes it very easy to focus on the content that's being shared. Now, it looks like Adele is sharing this video on the Kevin Cookie Company and I want to make sure I don't get distracted. This is a really high quality commercial. Up in the more actions menu, if we click on the ellipsis, first off, I can turn on focus. When I turn on focus, I'll no longer see all of the people in the meeting down here. Let's click on focus and here now you see that it focuses on the content, but I still have a lot of other stuff around this window. Once again, if I click on the ellipsis, I could also go down and turn on full screen mode and this will launch it so it uses up my full screen. So now I can just focus on this amazing commercial. Tip number 18, you can download an attendance report to keep track of who came to your meeting. Now, I'm kind of disappointed that I was having this big demo today and Patty, Grady, Miriam, and Diego decided not to join. I can download an attendance report to keep track of this. Within the participants pane, over on the right hand side, there's an ellipsis. When we click on that, we can now download an attendance report. Let's click on that. 
This opens up an attendance report and I can see all of the different attendees in the meeting. I could also see when they joined, when they left, and if they rejoined. To the right of that, I also see a timestamp for all of those different user actions. Tip number 19, you can launch together mode with many different scenes now. And if you're wondering, first off, why are there so many Kevins in the gallery view? Well, the Kevin Cookie Company is actually smaller than you would think. Although we have all of these different employee names, it turns out it's really just me operating this company. I cook the cookies, I do the marketing, I do the IT, I really do everything at this company. So how do we use together mode? Well, let's go to the top bar and click on the more actions ellipsis. And then currently we're in the gallery view where we're all separated into our own boxes. Instead, let's come together into together mode and click on this. We're now in together mode and you probably never thought that you would see this many Kevins in one location, but you finally got your wish. Within together mode, this is just the standard room with all of the white seats. If we go down to the bottom left-hand corner, we can change the scene and we have many different options. For example, we could change from white seats to dark seats, but there's more fun than just that. Down below, we have many different scenes that we can select from, lots of different interesting ones. I'm going to go with this one where we could sit on stone because that's probably more comfortable than sitting in the gallery view. Here now, you can see many different Kevins sitting on stones. I think by now, you've probably seen too much Kevin for one day, and at this point, we should probably just end the meeting, and that brings us to meeting tip number 20. To end the meeting, well, you could just click on this big red button button and you can just leave the meeting, but everyone else might continue having fun. And I would hate to leave this meeting and leave all these other Kevins behind. So I can click on this drop down, and I could also end the meeting. By ending the meeting, everyone will be kicked out. If you're a teacher, this could be helpful if you don't want students lingering around afterwards. All right, well that wraps it up. If you learned some new tips and tricks today, please give this video a thumbs up. To see future videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you wanna see me cover any other videos in the future, leave a note down below. All right, well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.